What's up, Fight Fans? You're listening to the In The Ring Boxing.com podcast show. We have on the line with us today the IBF junior middleweight champion, Cornelius K-9 Bundridge. What's up, champ? Thanks for being on with us today. Hey, what's happening, Carlos? Hey, man, what's going on? Uh, well, K-9, first of all, congratulations on becoming world champion. Uh, you earned that belt by knocking out Corey Spinks in August of 2010. Uh, how does it feel to be a champion, and, and what does having that belt do for your career? Well, um, it's supposed to lead to bigger and better things. Uh, it's been a slow process. I'm, I'm very thankful that God blessed me to be a world champion. Coming from Detroit, Michigan, where it hasn't been a, a known world champion in 26 years since time of times, that's a great accomplishment. I feel blessed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're from Detroit. You, you train out of the legendary Kronk Gym. Uh, you're working with the legendary trainer and Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, what has working with the manual done for you in terms of skill and technique? Well, you know, um, I feel like I feel like you know people people respect me now that I'm um, more and more that I work with Main Stewart, you know, than than just working with a regular you know uh, manager. But um, you know, um, he had, he knows he know a lot. You know, he, he's proven himself. Um, he has so many world champions as you as you see now. So many world champions and want want him to train them to this day. So I mean, he he just you know he he um he gets he demands a lot of respect from you know, boxing media and people. Yeah, champ, it, it's no secret that you've been campaigning for a huge fight for a while now. Uh, you stated you wanted Mayweather, Pacquiao, Miguel Cotto. Uh, if you were to get the opportunity to fight one of these guys, how, how do you see these fights playing out? Uh, one thing about me is um, I'm never going to call out someone I don't think I can be. I don't just fight just for the money. I, I fight, you know, fight for the fans. I fight to be the best. And, and, you know, of course, I fight to get, you know, to get paid, too. But um, I feel like I could be any of those guys that I, um, that I mentioned. And it's just I just haven't been given an opportunity to fight those guys because those guys are, are probably looking for, you know, easier, easier paydays. This, this payday, you know, for fight me would be a hard payday. Then it could be a result of no loss. And it could backfire in, in, in their career. So, I mean, you know, it really don't matter to me, you know, who I fight for as when it comes to one of those guys. I feel like I, I could be any of them. You know, it's just that, you know, they, they, they right now they don't want to fight me. But, I mean, I ain't pressed because I'm a world champion. So, you know, I haven't accomplished, you know, you know, what I wanted to accomplish as being a world champion. And I can't make nobody fight me if they don't want to fight me. But, I, but all unifications, if you really want to prove that you're the best fight in the world, then you should get all bills. I mean, I, I don't think, I can't recall if one of them, if any of them have had all, have all the bills or had all the bills before. And, you know, my goal is to, you know, to get all the bills. So I want to fight all the champions and be the best in my time. All right, champ. Well, you know, uh, it's been reported that uh, while you're calling these guys out, you know, of course, fighters have been calling you out, you know, and they should. You're the champ. Uh, but the most recent that I've heard was Kermit Cintron wants to fight you, and he thinks that uh, your expectations of getting a fight with these other guys aren't realistic, and that you should fight him. Uh, well, how do you respond to that, K9? Well, I got a better chance of fighting those guys than he do. I mean, I ain't the one flying out the wing like Superman. So uh, you know, and um, you know, he he's not the world champion. He had his chance. He was a world champion. He fought on TV, on HBO, and you know, and his last fight was terrible. So of course he would call me out. He's desperate. I mean, he called out Berto. Berto didn't give him a response. At least I'm, at least I'm giving no response. You know what I mean? That you know, I heard that he called me out and everything. But you know, he really know he don't want it. He's just desperate for a fight, and why not fight K-9 if I'm a world champion? But you notice the guys that's fighting me is in my rearview mirror. That those are the guys that's trying to get to my level. But the guys that I want to fight are the guys in my windshield. Them are the guys I want to fight. Them are the guys, you know, that's going to put me to the next step or put me on another level. So, you know, why those guys call me out, the guys that, that they want the shots, you know, I done, I done been there and done that. When I call them out, they didn't respond, so why should I respond? I don't have nothing to prove to him. You know, he, I'm the champ. He's not the champ. He's number two or number three or number four. I'm the, I'm the world champion. 
I mean, you can look at Ray Magazine, and in Ray Magazine, they got these guys that's rated higher than me in Ray Magazine, but how can you rate a guy higher than me that's jumping out the ring and HBO said so they don't even want to see him fight no more? And he's not even a champ of the world. Uh, that really, you know, I don't understand that, but I know it's politics. Mm. But they know who the champ is. They know who the dog is. They, they know what time it is, for real, believe me. All right, champ, we're, we're going to visit a, a little history in your career. Jump back about five years ago. You were a contestant on the reality show, The Contender. I, myself, am a fan of the Contender series. I, I've seen all the seasons, and I know that being a part of that show is an experience you'll never forget. Can you talk about what the pros and cons were uh, of being on a show like that? Yeah, you know what? Being on a reality show, you know, you know, when you be on a reality show, you can't, you know, you, we, we, when we was getting picked, when we were um, trying out for the show, they didn't want us to talk to each other because they wanted us to get to know each other on the show. And I and I understood that. But, you know, it, it took a minute for me to get used to the cameras when I was actually on the show because, you know, I, I had to realize that I'm being taken. This is a reality show because we weren't able to watch TV or nothing until, like, the last couple of weeks we were able to watch TV. We, we couldn't get on our cell phones. We were only able to talk to like our, uh, our wives or our girlfriends at the time like only once a week. So it was kind of frustrating. It kind of felt like jail when we was taping, when the show was being taped because we, we were so restricted on things, you know, certain things we couldn't do. But when I got, when I got home and I watched the show, I was like, wow, it was amazing. I loved it. But actually taping the show, you know, it was kind of you know, it, it, it was kind of stress, stressful because I couldn't be with my couldn't be with my wife. I couldn't see my wife. I couldn't see my kids. I didn't have the freedom I wanted. You know, I, could, I didn't have freedom. You know, on the show. But you know, it was amazing when I started the show. I loved it. You know, but getting ready to fight a grown man and not being around my wife with, with for as far as her support, being in a house of what sixteen other fighters, man, that's hard for a whole month straight. Man, that's real hard. But I was able to get through it, man, and I thank God, and I wouldn't trade that experience in boxing for nothing. It was amazing. I loved it. It made it easier for when I fought for a world title to be to go through um, something like that in my boxing career where, you know, it, it reminded me of a movie on leash. You know, they just take you around the corner somewhere, take you off the chain, and then, you know, you go in there and you fight. And then the winner, you know, he go on, and the loser, he just gets sent out. Sent out, you know, he get kicked off the show. It's over with for him. So, it, you know, it was a lot of pressure. It was only one prize, and that prize was 500000 So, you know, it made it real, it made it easy for these, these fights that I have now that, that it's nothing to me. You know, it ain't as hard as the contender. Fighting for a world title wasn't as hard as me on the contender. I mean, you view about me with people, man. You got to make the right choices, the right picks. And at the same time, you got to win. If you don't win, you you, you going home, and they're going to laugh at you. Like that like that movie, um, Carrie, y'all going to laugh at you. I didn't want them to laugh at me. Okay, now, uh, fighters know that, you know, getting in there with a guy like you is, is no walk in the park. You're a dog in the ring. You do what it takes to win. You're very strong, and uh, you come to fight. Uh, wh where does that come from? Is that inherited from any specific fighters that you looked up to as a kid, or could we attribute that to the fact that you, you come from humble beginnings? Yeah, yeah, I, I will say they come from humble, humble beginnings. I mean, not, you know, not seeing my daddy never, you know, never really truly had him a biological daddy. You know, I, I was raised, you know, with my mom as a single, well, I can't really say single parent because I had stepdads. And, you know, the, the stepdads that I had, they did a good job. But, um, you know, it's just, I'm just a hard worker, man. When I was a kid, I used to do, you know, I used to do like a thousand push-ups a day. From, from 11 years old to I was 14, I did so many push-ups. I mean, it was a guy kept on trying to dog me. So I stayed in the house and did push-ups. And when he saw me again, you know, that within the summertime, you know, he didn't want to mess with me anymore. So I always had a drive to just do whatever it took, you know, to, to be the best or to do whatever it took to, you know, to not, you know, to, to, to be noticed, to get respect. And, and boxing is a sport that if you're the best, you know what I'm saying, and you get respect. And I get, I got a lot of respect, you know, when I was on the contender, after I was the last one picked, I told him the last year first and first should be last. And I even get more respect now that I'm a world champion. I told him the last year first and first should be last. I mean, I just, I just demand respect, man. I, you know, I don't like bullies. And, you know, on the show, they kind of portrayed me as a bully, but that really wasn't the case. I wasn't going to say nothing to nobody. I was just going to be cool and just chill. But, you know, Walt just was walking around the house trying to intimidate me by saying his city, Seattle, Seattle, Seattle all the time and 
shut up, walking around me trying to intimidate me and backfire. I, I'm, I'm from Detroit, you know, where at this point in time, it was a murder capital. I haven't seen, you know, I'm not seeing everything. I mean, you can't sit, shoot, sugarcoat your city to be like this, this and that one. You know, I'm, a, and I'm in Detroit, and it don't get no worse than that when it comes to, like, the things that I don't saw, the things that people go through every day. All right, champ. Well, uh, you want Pacquiao. Uh, he's tied up for May 7th, as you know. You know, he's fighting Mosley. I just want to get your prediction on that fight. Um... Um, you know, Shane Mosley is the one guy I like to see fight. I, I like to see him. Shane Mosley fight because he always bring it. He, he give you his best, and I like that. And a lot of fighters don't give it their best. They get their money, man, and they, they, they pick and choose who they want to fight. You know, and I don't like, you know, I mean, you do what you want to do. You know, you're a fighter. You are, you able to do what you want to do. But um, I really, you know, I, I like Shane Mosley, as, you know, as a person and as a fighter. You know, he's a good fighter, you know. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be a good fight. I don't, I don't know who's going to win the fight because anything can happen. I mean, you know, I'm quite sure that, you know, Manny Pacquiao is the favorite to win. I believe anything can, can happen. I, I'm, I'm rooting for um for Mayweather to win. But, you know, I believe Pacquiao got the edge and, and Pacquiao might pull it off. But, you know, I definitely root for Ma- uh, for Shane Mosey because, you know, a lot of things he done been through personally in his life, man. You know, he deserves a victory like this. And, you know, we're going to see what happens. All right, champ. Uh, thanks for being on the In the Ring Boxing dot com podcast show. Is there anything you want to say to your fans? Oh uh, yeah, I just want them to know that man that I'm um I'm the Black Rocky. I'm Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, go to my K- Go to my Twitter. My Twitter page. Follow me on my Twitter on Kaden and I'm boxing. Um, um, you know it ain't my fault that I ain't fighting right now. You know I'm I'm ready. I'm always ready and prepared. Uh, you know, just got my promoters and my managers. You know, they just got to, they just got to, you know, step to the plate and make something happen for me. So I got the best promoter in the world, and Don King, the best manager in the world, Emmanuel Stewart. And um, you know, we gonna get together, man, and we should be fighting real soon. I believe we might be fighting in June, but um, stay tuned. You know, the last should be first, and the first should be last. Ain't nothing changed. God is great. Jesus for life. <laughs> Thanks for the interview too. All right, fight fans, that's the IBF junior middleweight champ, Cornelius K9 Bundridge, and I'm Carlos Cruz from IntheRingBoxing.com telling you to stay cool and educate yourself. Peace.